I'm so excited to imagine how connected learning ideas will benefit my daughter, will benefit the daughters of my friends who are educators and makers and scientists and engineers. I want to invite you to struggle with me for a few minutes to continue to think about how connecting learning ideas can benefit all young people. We know that outcomes from our national system of schooling are deeply inequitable. The test scores of students in our most and least affluent communities look like they come from different countries. Outside of schools, affluent families in the US have dramatically increased their investment in educational enrichment, even as public schools have cut the arts and PE. Put another way, as profoundly inequitable as our national education system is, our national ecology of learning is much worse. The authors of the recent Connected Learning Report wisely and courageously, in my view, recognize that the technical apparatus of connected learning, of digital media and learning, will not inherently address this serious problem. If we care about inequality, we need to examine how our efforts could make things worse. To me, one critical distinction in exploring these problems is investigating how expanding opportunity and expanding equality can work at cross purposes. Let's look at some models. Let's define learning as the number of neurons in young people's brains rearranged for pro-social purposes. Let's imagine that digital media can expand these kinds of learning. What does this look like in a profoundly inequitable society? One possibility assumes that all people benefit from digital media and learning, but the affluent have more technical, social, and financial capacity to take advantage of these opportunities. If we want greater equality, however, we can't just expand opportunity. We have to expand opportunity in ways that disproportionately benefit the learners we care most about. We have to close gaps. It can be easy to mistake expanding opportunities for reducing inequality. We are drawn to the powerful stories of working class children who find a passion in media and maker culture and transform that passion into academic and career success. But these stories can have a kind of Horatio Alger quality to them, where web comic artists replace bobbin boys. With Horatio Alger stories, we have to be careful that individual stories of opportunity don't mask the limits of those pathways in a new gilded age. Connected learning begins from the position of the individual student and her interests and inspires us to think about how we can build around individual students, communities, experts, resources, ideas that support the nurturing of those passions. One challenge with this model is that affluent families and communities have far greater capacity to build these learning infrastructure around their individual children in and out of school. Consider what a maker lab looks like at Deerfield Academy, an elite independent school. It's built in an 80,000 square foot science center funded by David Koch. It includes three labs for robotics, electric vehicle construction, and biochemistry, staffed with PhD level teachers working with class sizes of seven or eight. It's awesome and it costs $50,000 per student per year. My own research examines how wikis have been used in schools serving different populations. Perhaps no technology has democratized the co-construction of learning like, and knowledge like wikis have, but if you look at their adoption in schools, you see that classroom wikis disproportionately benefit the affluent. They're more likely to be created in schools serving affluent students, and in those schools, they're more likely to foster involvement and likely to persist longer. I have no doubts that connected learning opens up new pathways for young people in non-dominant communities. It creates new opportunity. But I wrestle with the serious risk that these opportunities will be distributed in society in ways that actually expand inequality. If this were a TED talk, this would be the part where I tell you the solution is easy. That we just need flipped MOOCs that teach creativity built in wall holes. This is not a TED talk. This is hard. I think one promising pathway forward is to refine design principles for equity and connected learning. What are the principles we've discovered in this room that ensure that our interventions, our communities, our principles, our platforms serve the learners we care most about? A harder task is to think about how we might change the social contract. Right now, we believe that all children deserve the right to equitable amounts of schooling, even if we don't live up to that belief. How do we go about expanding the social contract to develop a widespread belief that all children have the right to equitable ecologies of learning? These are the things that keep me up at night.
If you're awake then too, let's talk.